And so you best know I'm gonna listen to it every single time it comes on. Quite a statement to make, but Red has the best vault tracks. Literally Taylor Swift's saddest song. I don't know if people would agree with that. After 1989 came out, I just realized I will just like whatever Taylor Swift does because Taylor Swift does it. I feel like that album changed the trajectory of my life. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, it's Nina. If you are new here, welcome, I'm so happy to have you, and if you're not new, thanks for coming back. The Tortured Pose department comes out in two weeks. And I thought before we officially enter into this new era that I would kind of go back and reflect on all of the 10 Taylor Swift albums that we already have, the eras, the aesthetics, and everything, and just kind of rank my favorites. I've been asking a bunch of people lately, my family and friends, to rank their top three Taylor Swift albums because I'm so curious because I know that like being a hardcore Swifty myself, I know what my ranking is. My top three Taylor Swift albums would have to be number one, Red Taylor's version, number two, 1989 Taylor's version, and three, Folklore. Hi, Nina and friends. Nina requested that I make a short little video on my top three favorite Taylor Swift albums. That these are my favorite for this week because I think it changes a lot. But this week, definitely 1989, Fearless, and Red. And every once in a while, Folklore and Midnight's. My top three Taylor Swift albums at the moment are one, 1989 Taylor's version, two, Reputation, and three, Red Taylor's version. What's your favorite Taylor Swift albums? Lover, Folklore, and Speak Now Taylor's version, in that order. But it's interesting to hear other people's perspectives, what songs are their favorite, what albums are their favorite. It's kind of surprising sometimes. And every single person has a different opinion. Like not a single person has the same ranking as me or a same ranking as someone else that I know. And I know that ranking videos can sometimes be controversial because people feel so strongly about Taylor Swift's music. They get personally offended if you rank their favorite favorite song or their favorite album lower. I get it. Because we've had such strong emotional experiences with these songs, it feels like a personal attack sometimes when someone doesn't like that song or maybe just doesn't like it as much as another song. But the reality is we all have different songs that speak to us. We have different albums that we find really relatable because we all have individual life experiences. A song that means so much to me might not mean as much to you because we didn't go through the same stuff in life. I genuinely enjoy hearing people's rankings and opinions that are different from mine because I feel like it gives me a new perspective on the song. It helps me get to know that person a little bit better. You know, I feel like each album has a personality and I feel like if someone says, oh, my favorite album is 1989, you're like, oh, she's gotta be so fun. She likes the bops. And if someone says their favorite album is folklore, they must really like lyrics and sadder songs rather than the hyper pop of certain other eras. So again, it doesn't mean one is better than the other. It just means like we all like what we like, you know? And that's a good thing because how boring would it be if all of us had the same opinion and all of us agreed this was good, this was bad, like there would be no nuance. It would just be so black and white. So anyways, when I was thinking about this idea to kind of rank the albums before this new album comes out that we have not heard yet, it's literally always so crazy to me before album release, like there is I think there's 20 songs on the Tortured Poets album and it's crazy that we haven't heard them yet. Like we're gonna have 20, 20 new Taylor Swift songs and who knows, maybe one of those is gonna be my favorite. So basically what I wanted to do is go through and kind of, I think I'm gonna rank my top five albums out of the 10. I don't wanna put any albums at the bottom because I just truly, I can't do it. It hurts too much to put any album at the bottom of the list. So I'm gonna rank my top five and I also have superlatives. So everyone's gonna get their special moment, some commendations for certain categories that I have created. Literally like 20 minutes ago I thought of this, so. So I'm gonna start with my top five. My number five album is Folklore. Folklore for me, I have a special place in my heart for Folklore just because it came out during the pandemic when everything was so, you know, everything was coming down on us and that was like such a bright light. That album meant so much at the time. All of the songs on that album were deeply emotional emotional and the music that I really like is where you can pay attention to the lyrics. I just love breaking down lyrics 
and really diving into the meaning of songs. I loved the sad girl aesthetic because I'm a sad girl. I love sad music. I have always loved sad music. I feel like some people avoid listening to sad songs because it makes them sad. When I'm sad, I want to listen to sad music. I don't want to listen to happy music. But what I have written down for folklore is best album to listen to top to bottom. I feel like these days people don't listen to albums all the way through from start to finish just because of the streaming and everything. No one's putting a CD in their car to listen to one single album. They're shuffling the songs. They're only listening to the ones they really, really like the most. They're skipping out on songs that they maybe don't connect to right away. I think because of streaming, albums and listening to a full album is not really something people do anymore. But Folklore is continuously an album I come back to and if I'm listening to Folklore, I am only listening to Folklore. I'm listening starting at the one, ending with the lakes. So I know we try to avoid the term sonically cohesive, but I this might be a hot take. I think Folklore is the most sonically cohesive album. Every single song belongs on this album. I don't know how to explain it, but I just feel like it's a complete story. It tells a complete story. I'm obsessed with the storytelling of it. So most sonically cohesive and the last superlative I have is no skips because I feel like this album is supposed to be consumed as one. So if I'm playing it, I'm pretty much not skipping any song. Moving up the list at my number four slot, this one surprised me. When I was sat down to like look at all the albums, I was like, I have to put Midnight's at number four. I'm surprised it's so high up because it's new and and I feel like I tend more towards the albums that don't have that much synth pop to it. I feel like the newer pop Taylor albums are not always my number one, but Midnight's, this album, the effect that it had on me and also like, I feel like the entire world was that when you first listened to it, you were like, I, I don't know how to feel about it. Like I truly, when I first listened to it, if you go look at my reaction to Midnight's, I think I was like in shock listening to it. Also, it was like 6 a.m. when I listened to it, so I wasn't fully there, but I was like silent the whole time. I had very few remarks when reacting to the album. I was just taking it all in, but it was the album I was so surprised I ended up liking so much. It had this common thread throughout it that was slightly different than all of her other pop albums that was like a drug. Like I want the production of this album in my veins. It gives me serotonin, which brings me to my superlatives for Midnight's. This album is the best album to drive a long distance with because it's one of the albums like folklore that I can listen to front to back. Literally like Maroon all the way through till Dear Reader, all of the bonus tracks and everything. I love every single song on Midnight's so much. <laughs> And I feel like when it first came out, I wasn't sure I was gonna feel that way about the album because it was kind of just like, I love Folklore Evermore so much, I wanted to like stay in the forest, but she's like, no, we're getting back out there, we're going to the club, all that. So yes, the best driving album specifically on a long trip by yourself where you can just like scream sing all the lyrics and everything. It's such a vibe. This is also the best pre-game album morale booster. Like if you're with your girls and you just want to put on an album, for a mood boost this album literally like last weekend two weekends ago me and my friends were driving home from LA from a concert and the drive is like an hour which is like the perfect amount of time to listen to Midnight's we listened through the whole album and we sang every single word of the whole album the entire drive home at like midnight it is truly the best album to drive home from a concert because it keeps the vibes going like I don't want to hit the post-concert depression when I'm in the car I want to keep the, keep riding the high until I go to sleep. The last thing I have for Midnight's is the album with the biggest confidence. The confidence this album just like immediately gives me for whatever reason like be jeweled. Like I'm going out tonight. I can still make the whole place shimmer. I feel like her attitude in this song is so confident and with that it has the most emotional range of any of the Taylor Swift albums and I say that because it has some of the most heart-wrenching 
fucking saddest, devastating lyrics, but then it also has some of the most glitter gel pen pop classic Taylor Swift bops on it. So I feel like the emotional range of this album is so wide. We have Lavender Haze and Bejeweled, Mastermind, all those songs are like, the beat of them is so happy and so loud and addictive. And then we have songs from like the 3am tracks that are so emotionally complex, like The Great War, Would've, Could've, Should've, Dear Reader. She is diving into some deep mental health issues into this album, but you would never know it because of the production of the songs. So anyways, I feel like this album as a whole was like, just like a full circle, well-rounded album. Well-rounded is a good way of describing it. Moving up the list to number three is 1989. And 1989 was the first era that I like fully stepped into the fandom of Swifties and went full force. I joined Tumblr, I made fan accounts, I spent all night making Taylor Swift edits on my iMovie. Like it was my first era fully stepping into the fandom, so I feel like I have like a soft spot for the 1989 era. The album itself was the first pop album. It was Taylor's second breakthrough album. You know, she had her first one with Fearless, breaking into mainstream, and then this one now, fully pop, fully on all radio stations. 1989 also has my favorite song of all time, You Were In Love, on it as a deluxe track, and I feel like just for that reason alone brought it way up the ranking list because that song means so much to me and I literally cry if I start talking about that song. <laughs> Um, some of my superlatives for 1989, best music videos. Like, I could watch the 1989 music videos over and over and over again, and I still can't get enough of them. They are so well done. The editing, the production of them, the storylines, like, they were so thought out. She spent so much time and put so much money into them. I truly appreciate them so much. My favorite one, oh gosh, it's a tie between Blank Space and Out of the Woods. I love Loved the Out of the Woods music video, like the meaning behind all of it. That one was very well done. I just feel like she went all out during the 1989 era on the music videos. Also, this era had the best street style, like the outfits, the hair, the makeup, everything was so on point in the 1989 era, like she had no misses. I think I just really loved her two-piece sets. The short hair was super cute and I even cut my hair short just to be like her. And I think for me, I think for me, um, I realized during the 1989 era that I just loved anything that Taylor Swift put out like any song and it was because of the songwriting not because of the production because it was gonna be a pop album I was afraid I wasn't gonna like it because I liked all of her previous albums and her more country stuff that I was like what if I don't like it and then after 1989 came out I just realized I will just like whatever Taylor Swift does because Taylor Swift does it and that's when I realized she's not in a genre she's in her own field playing by her own rules so anyways 1989 is pretty high up there and especially after the re-release of 1989 I just like made me love it even more I love that I got to kind of revisit that era that I became like truly a part of the fandom and it was just a full circle moment so that's why 1989 is at number three and Say Don't Go is my favorite vault track literally so good I think when all the re-recordings are done I'm gonna go back and like re-rank every single vault from the Taylor's versions because I already did a video ranking all of the vault songs up until the Speak Now vault. But now we have the 1989 vault and then we're also gonna have Reputation and Debut. So I am sure that is going to change eventually. And I didn't include 1989 in there. So if you want me to rank all of the vault songs after all of the vault songs are released, let me know. Moving up to my number two, which is going to be the Red album. Red is like more than just an album. It's like a feeling. I feel like this, I, all I wrote for Red is that Red owns the month of October. This album is October. There's so much linked with Red sensory wise, seasons, weather, nostalgic feelings. It's a very visual album. There's a lot of elements to it with imagery. Obviously, All Too Well is on Red and that song was so important to me for so long. You know, my top three songs of Taylor Swift, I would have to say are You Are In Love, Last Kiss, and All Too Well. My holy trinity, 
And so All Too Well definitely was like an integral part of Red being that high on the list. And for the longest time, Taylor didn't play that song live. She really didn't play it as a surprise song until we got to the Reputation tour, which was four or five years after Red came out. Because the fans loved that song so much, it took on a whole different meaning to her. And when I was at the concert for Reputation, she ended up playing All Too Well as a surprise song. I lost my mind. And I always try to listen to you and, and understand what, what you might want, what you might want from a show. And there's one song that people just request more than every oh my other God, it's one. All too well. it's all too well. So, please sing them as loudly as you possibly oh can. She had only played that song like twice before, once on 1989 tour, and then she played it on the Red tour as part of the set list, but she really didn't play it anymore after. Holds a special place in my heart, and also I feel like the Red Taylor's version era was one of my favorite things ever. One of the best times in the last four years. I will say, this might be uh, quite a statement to make, but Red has the best vault tracks so far. I always come back to the Red vault, and I have to say, like, I just don't have a choice in my brain. I'm like, Red, I love every single one of those vault tracks so much, and it truly, like, completed the whole album. Obviously, we have All Too Well 10, which is, like, an insane thing, and I've said this before, but every time All Too Well 10 comes on, like, shuffle or just, you know, starts playing, I can't do anything. I have to listen to all 10 minutes of it. Like, that's my rule. It's a no-skip, because we wanted that song for so long. We wanted the 10-minute version. We begged for it for almost 10 years, and so you best know I'm gonna listen to it every single time it comes on. I have it as most chaotic album. I would say not only emotionally, we've got 22, and then we've got All Too Well, and then we've got Sad Beautiful Tragic, but then we've got We're Never Getting Back Together. Like, she is all over the place emotionally, but also production-wise. We've got Begin Again, that's got the more country vibe, and then we've got I Knew We're Trouble, that's got a dubstep. Like, production-wise, also so chaotic, but I think it's a chaotic good. Moving up to my very top spot, I feel like a lot of you know this. I am a speak now girly through and through. I don't know why, it's just like my soul. And also I think because when I truly discovered Taylor Swift, it was because a song that truly spoke to me so much. It was like the first song that I felt like somebody was writing about me. And that would be the song Mean. I remember I was 14 maybe. I heard a cover of Mean and then I went and looked up the song and it was by Taylor and I proceeded to buy it on iTunes and listen to it for literally five straight hours on repeat same song five hours and it became kind of like my anthem and like really just a cathartic experience and so once I found that song I was like listening to all of the other songs and then I found Sparks Fly and then I found Last Kiss it was like definitely a domino effect when I found the Speak Now album it's obviously like I knew Taylor Swift. I had already known Fearless. I learned all the songs on guitar, but when I found the Speak Now album, it was because I had never listened to the whole album before. It was like a crazy experience. Like, you know, when you find new music, you find new music, but it's old. I had that full experience when I was 14, where I just listened to Taylor's entire discography and it all started with Mean. So I feel like just the origins of my joining the Swifties, this album is really important to me. I was such a hopeless romantic and I loved reading romance books and writing songs and journaling and I feel like that era totally encompassed my personality and I think I also just really love that she wrote the whole album by herself because it was around that time that I was getting into writing myself so I feel like if I had never heard that song and then the album I would have never picked up my guitar and started playing guitar again I would have never started writing songs or you know just writing in general so I feel like that album changed the trajectory of my life. Not in a dramatic way, but just how it affected me a lot. Some superlatives I have for Speak Now. Most songs that make me cry on the album. It's the album that has the most songs that make me emotional. Last Kiss. I just, whenever I need to cry, I just let, listen to that. Like, it's literally Taylor Swift's saddest song. I don't know if people would agree with that, but for me, it is. <laughs> Innocent. I, <laughs> I feel like when Taylor's version of Speak Now came out, a lot 
lot of the songs I was listening to and when you're listening to these songs literally like 12 13 years later it hits so hard especially songs like innocent oh my gosh I feel like the gravity of some of the lyrics I wasn't able to relate to in high school but now they hit so hard very relatable never grow up literally sobbing I feel like your understanding of the lyrics and your ability to relate to them increases as you get older and so it's just kind of like it has different meaning now than it did back then but it's always gonna like be relatable I don't know how Taylor does it truly all of the songs withstand any test of time mean I still come back to that song like whenever you're encountering people bullying you or <sighs> just encounter mean people. It's like everybody knows what that feels like regardless of if you're 15, 50, 75. Like it doesn't go away. There's always gonna be mean people but that song really gave me the strength to pick myself back up when I was in high school so you know come back to it every now and then and again I just feel like with all of the re-recordings it's giving us a chance to kind of revisit these eras of not only Taylor's life but of our own lives when those albums first came out. I got to see the eras tour before and after Taylor added Long Live to the set list, which I am so blessed because I was a little disappointed that Enchanted was the only song that she chose to put on the Speak Now set, but the fact that she added Long Live because, you know, we just wanted that so badly, it truly, literally sobbing, you know, Long Live in person with Taylor and with everybody just it's very emotional I already touched on this but the last superlative I had for speak now was most emotionally relatable songs for me and I know that that's different for everybody last thing my favorite song from speak now vault is timeless it's just my favorite I love the melody I love the imagery I love the sentiment it's just all around cute emotional wholesome those are my superlatives for my top five ranking now in no particular order I'm gonna give out my other superlatives for my other five albums here. So we've got Reputation, which I think was the best era to experience as a fan, to live in it, because this was the era that only like the real dedicated fans were there for Taylor because a lot of people kind of turned their back on her when she got canceled. Maybe people who liked her music, but like jumped on the bandwagon of calling her a snake. We were in the trenches. I've said this before, the Reputation era before for the Reputation era, like 2016, was a rough time to be a Taylor Swift fan because nobody really liked her. I say that this is my favorite era because you knew when you showed up to the concert that everybody there had like stood with Taylor during all of that crazy drama. And it felt like the closest we had been to her because of it. And it was the era of the most growth. For Taylor and her music and her ability to deal with the bad press and also just for us to go through this little edgy phase, she got way more confident during Reputation. She was owning her career. She was making the best comeback of all time after having her character assassinated, attempted, attempted assassination. We all know that she rose back up from the dead, but I think it was my favorite era to witness and to be a part of because of that her picking herself back up and completely proving everybody wrong coming back with a vengeance and saying that it's okay to not forgive people for bad things and just not staying silent anymore and just really not tolerating people that were trying to ruin her career I think I just also loved like the reputation era I will say was my favorite one the era itself it had the best merch that's another superlative it had the best merch of any other era it was the first time Taylor was putting out merch you could wear on the daily basis and it was subtle, it was cute, it was trendy. I will die in my olive green reputation cropped long sleeve. I love that sweater so much. It is my favorite piece of merch ever. I wore it like every other day for two years and I love that it was like she was giving us permission to like step outside of our comfort zone. Like I was not the type of person that wore black. I was like, you know, a girly girl, still am, still a lover girly at heart but like I was wearing black boots and doing 
in like the dark hair and makeup for the concert and it was so not my personality but it was so much fun to just kind of step outside and do something different so she was all giving us permission to just go through our revenge phase our reputation era and before the eras tour the reputation tour was the best concert i had been to up until last year next we have fearless and the fearless album was the first of the Taylor Swift songs I was ever introduced to when I was nine or ten years old. I'm kind of aging myself here. Love Story was one of the first songs I learned on my guitar. White Horse, You Belong With Me. I was definitely a fan of the music in the Fearless era, so I would give the Fearless era most nostalgic award because I'm listening to Love Story and I'm thinking about me at ten years old, like screaming it in the car with my friends on the way home from school. Like, it really brings back a lot of happy memories that album and I think it does for a lot of people too because I feel like fearless is beloved by most people if not all people this is also the best karaoke album it's that it's your hairbrush album you know it's like you belong with me back in college when I would go sing karaoke I would always request to sing a Taylor Swift song and they always put on something from fearless we got love story you belong with me fearless title track 15 is a special song to me because it was the first song that that I like was able to perform in front of people. I was never really a performer. I mostly just played guitar in my bedroom, but I could play that song like the back of my hand and it was the only one I knew I could play and not forget the words or the chords to. So that was a very special song for me. This also wins for Comfort Album. I've been listening to Fearless Taylor's version in the past week just because I feel like spring right before summer, like April, May is like Fearless season. Fearless reminds me of summer, sunshine, driving with the windows down. I'll never get tired of listening to them. Even, oh gosh, how many years later? Like 15 or 16 years this album has been a part of my life. The fact that you can still listen to something for that long and it still have the same amount of meaning and you're just truly timeless. Moving on to Evermore, the sister album of Folklore. I feel like both of those albums go together in my mind, but I always said that Folklore I liked better as a whole album and Evermore I liked very specific songs from. Like it has better individual songs I would say and Champagne Problems is obviously one that is one of my favorite songs of all time. Evermore is the album I listen to on a rainy day. It's definitely mixed into every single rainy day playlist, every fall playlist, every winter playlist I have Evermore on there. It is also my favorite album to listen to on vinyl. I don't know why I always gravitate to Evermore when I'm thinking, oh, I want to put on a record while I journal or I want to put on a record while I'm doing dishes or doing anything. I don't know. I just really love to listen to it from top to bottom, similar to folklore. It's one that I can just put on and it gives great ambiance and it was made to be played on a record player. When it's like raining outside, you light a few candles, you're drinking hot chocolate. Evermore is definitely a winter album for me. I love giving the albums different seasons and they definitely are played more in certain seasons and Evermore is definitely like a November through January album for me. And lastly, I think Evermore is the most poetic, has the most poetic lyrics. When I think of all of the songs on Evermore, I marvel at the poetry. Champagne Problems, Gold Rush, the way that Taylor speaks in these songs so eloquently. Obviously folklore too, but I feel like especially Evermore. Tolerate it. These are like pieces of art, truly. They should be studied in universities and I think they will be someday. Next we have Lover. Although short-lived, the Lover era was one of my favorite things ever because I feel like with Reputation I was like yeah I'm edgy, I'm wearing black, I'm whatever whatever and then when Taylor announced Lover and you could tell the aesthetic was like completely the opposite I was like okay but like this is so much more me. The butterflies, literally like my butterfly clip in my hair, ribbons, I'm a pink purple girly so I just love everything butterflies hearts like stereotypical I know but like literally my wardrobe is so colorful I think I'm drawn to this era's aesthetic so I'll say lover has my favorite aesthetic of all of the eras and even on the eras tour lover is my favorite outfit of the entire tour that bodysuit is perfection immaculate I just love sparkly things you know <laughs> Best Glitter Gel Pen album. Cruel Summer is the best Glitter Gel Pen song. The Archer is my favorite track 
five. As I go through every album, I'm realizing, you know, obviously I have albums I identify with more than others, but each album has something very special about it, and they all have different elements that are my favorite. Lover has my favorite track five, my favorite song is on a different album, my favorite era, my favorite one to listen to in the car. Every album has its own special little thing, which is why I decided to do superlatives instead of like ranking them so black and white. This was also my favorite hairstyle Taylor ever had. It was like a little bit lighter than her natural blonde. It was not quite platinum, but it was definitely like a vibrant blonde. How she would do her makeup and like I loved the pink hair, like the different hair chalks is so me. I've dyed my hair pink a couple times. Truly heartbreaking. We never got to experience lover fest. I know that would have been like my favorite thing ever creating an outfit for that era, but if we got lover fest, we probably wouldn't have got folklore evermore and you know the domino effect. So we love what lover gave us for the short time that we had with her. Last but certainly not least, we have debut. This album was one that I kind of discovered the full album when I was in high school, like years after it had come out, and I didn't really know any of the songs on debut. I just knew Should Have Said No, Our Song, Picture to Burn, Teardrops on My Guitar. I only knew the singles, and so going back and listening to all of the other songs, I felt like the debut album really resonated with me when I was 15 and 16 because that's when Taylor wrote it, and so I think the emotions written about in that album are very validating for young girls, especially because some of the songs are not even about relationships. Like we had The Outside, which was about feeling left out of your friend group. And I totally related to that. Tied together with a smile, trying to help your friend going through a hard time. Like we forget that Taylor writes songs about other things that isn't just romantic love, which is why I'm really excited for the vault tracks because I feel like there's definitely more to the story than what we have seen from the debut album. So I wrote that this was the best album to discover later on because I feel like reflecting on it You can tell how talented she was at such a young age And then lastly, this is my favorite album to play on guitar Just because when Taylor was starting out in country music It was very guitar heavy because she wrote all of her songs on guitar These were like some of the first songs I learned and when people would ask me to play something on guitar I would play our song. I would play should have said no. They're the best campfire songs the best sing-along songs and they're just so fun to play on guitar because you know the strumming and like Taylor went hard back in the early days with her guitar songs she was so country but I love the acoustic vibe of it for sure because like I do love country music as well I don't talk about it as much I just grew up my family played a lot of country music and I think that's why I got into guitar in the first place because I wanted to learn how to play all those songs so naturally I gravitated towards Taylor because she was this girl writing country songs and I just wanted to be like her. Now that is all the albums. That is all my superlatives, my rankings, and everything. I am so excited to add the Torture Poets department to our Taylor Swift family of albums and to the eras. I am so excited for what is to come here. It can only get better. I think why I don't like ranking is because we are comparing albums Taylor wrote when she was 16 to albums she's writing at 32. You really can't compare the two because that is 15 years of experience and so I don't think obviously obviously you would hope the album you wrote last year was better than the album you wrote 16 years ago and so I think it's natural to have you know the newer albums be fresh in our minds gravitate more towards those but still appreciating how talented Taylor was so early on in her career and her life but yeah I would love to know your guys's top five rankings your album rankings your favorite songs your favorite eras any superlatives you have in the description box. I would so look forward to reading those. I feel like because everybody has a different thing they appreciate, every single album gets the attention it deserves. Although some may be underrated, it is always going to be appreciated by somebody. I'm so excited to react to Tortured Poets with you guys and chat all about it when it comes out in a few weeks. So if you want to be here for that reaction, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. I will be posting my full reaction to the new album. Thank you guys for being here, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.